ಸುಚಕ್ರ ವರದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಶುದ್ಧ ಸತ್ವ ಗುರುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ರೀನಿಧಿ ರಾಘವಂ ವಂದೇ ಯಪಾರ ಕರುಣಾಕರ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ರಾಮಾನುಜೌ ವಂದೇ ಗೀತಾ ತದ್ಭಾಷ್ಯ ದಾಯಿನೌ ವಂಶಾಲಂಕೃತ ಹಸ್ತಾಬ್ಜೌ ಗೋದಾನಾಥ ಸಹೋದರೌ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಯು ಆಲ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಔಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಕನ್ವೇ ಮೈ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮಿಸ್ ಸುನೀತಾ ಗ್ರಾಂಧಿ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ದಿಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಹರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ದಿಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಆಥೆಂಟಿಕ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ದಿಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಫೋಕಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡೈಲಿ ಲೈಫ್ ಮೋರ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕಲಿ ಆಥೆಂಟಿಕ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಹೌ ಫಾರ್ ಬೈ ಅವರ್ ಓನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಗುಡ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ದಟ್ ಒರಿಜಿನಾಲಿಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಅವರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಆಥೆಂಟಿಕ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಹಿಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಫಾರ್ ಆಥೆಂಟಿಕ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಕಪ್ ಟೈಮ್ ರೈಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ನೌ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟೆಟ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರಿಟಿ ಟೂ ಸ್ಟೆಟ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ನೆಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಫೋರ್ ಸ್ಟಿಕಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಪಾತ್ ಸ್ಟಿಕಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಪಾತ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಲೆಟರ್ ಆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಸೊ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆಂಟ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಸ್ ಶೋಡ್ ಬೈ ಲಾಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ನೌ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ now the question is many of us long to become leaders nobody will say i don't want to become a leader leading is everybody's wish but how to become a leader some people say we have to become an ascetic or swami ji to become a leader others think we have to become rich to lead others some say we should become a politician to lead others some say education and experience will make us lead others there may be some truth there may be some truth in all these arguments leave them aside but what lord krishna says is you need not search for leadership anywhere else you need not separately become an ascetic you need not become a rich man you need not be specially qualified even of course we have got qualification we are qualified but you need not get something special qualification for leadership no separate experience then how to become a leader lord krishna says leadership quality lies in performance of our own duty god has blessed each of us with a duty if we discharge that duty properly it is good for our own selves it is good for the society as well because god has created everybody for a purpose nobody in this earth is without a purpose so if we discharge our duty properly it is leadership in itself it is good for our own selves it is good for the society and just think of this if we perform our duty properly we can lead others by an example by encouraging them to observe their duties properly now look at lord krishna's advice in bhagavad gita chapter 2 verse 37 bhagavad gita 2 37 hato va prapsyase swargam jitva va bhokshyase mahin tasmat uttishtha kaunteya yuddhaya krita nischaya now look at the scene of arjuna arjuna tries to retreat from the war due to his affection on relatives and friends and here arjuna even contemplates asceticism or sanyasa arjuna wishes to go for asceticism or sanyasa i don't want to fight this is a gory horrible war no no i won't fight i will become a sanyasi i will become a sage 
but to him lord krishna says do your duty if you retreat from your duty at any cost for whatever reason if you retreat from your duty you will be called a coward so go and fight we say do or die right lord krishna gives you do or die formula hato va prapsyase swargam arjuna even if you are slain in this war by your enemies even if you are killed in this war by your enemies you will attain heaven or the bliss of liberation if you emerge victorious if you defeat your enemies then you can enjoy the kingdom without obstacles so either way your duty alone is suitable for you in the case of defeat you will get heaven in the case of victory you will get your kingdom but if you retreat you will be labeled as a coward so who is a leader he should fight a true fighter is a leader even if he dies he will be labeled as martyr even if he lives and succeeds he will be called as a warrior but if he retreats from the fight he will be called as a coward so either way if you perform your duty you will be a martyr or a warrior if you retreat from your duty you will become a coward so you decide what to do krishna says to arjuna so this is setting by an example for arjuna for a warrior or king his duty is to fight similarly every person has got his own duty if a person executes his duty properly then he leads others by an example that you do your duty also properly i will like to explain this with a short anecdote from my own life anyway we have to perform our duty for that a small anecdote when i was doing my final year mbbs in 2012 i appeared for university examination final year examination surgery first paper general surgery first paper exam but to my dismay all the questions in the question paper were from general surgery second paper syllabus i had prepared for general surgery first paper but all the questions were from second paper syllabus now we students represented to our examiner the hall invigilator we told him sir all the questions are from second paper we have got two days leave for second paper because that day was friday saturday sunday two days leave monday only second paper so we had reserved those two days for preparing for second paper but for the first paper itself they have asked questions from second paper how can we answer sir but we got a queer strange answer from our invigilator you are all medical students don't you know that there is no rigid distinction as first paper or second paper the invigilator asked us when a patient comes to you with pain in his hand will you tell him that no no today i have prepared for leg only if you are coming for pain with hand please come tomorrow i will treat can you say so so in case of medicine you you should be prepared to answer anything anywhere any time he said oh my god what shall i do shall i come back i didn't prepare anything for second paper the question is first paper what shall i do but i just start for a while i meditated on the lotus feet of my acharyas and then came to a decision i decided to make a sincere attempt with what all knowledge i have in my memory because we have studied for this many years four and a half years we have studied definitely that memory will be there we have revised many times we have attended revision tests we have seen patients practically as well so what i decided is if i retreat from this exam then it is automatically failure that's all i have to wait for 6 months and reappear for the exam i decided to make a sincere attempt so what i did was all the questions were regarding various diseases only in general surgery second paper we get diseases regarding abdomen and urinary system so what i did was i just put subheadings i will put the question number and subheadings for each disease asked in the question paper like definition of the disease causes of the disease symptoms investigations to be done for diagnosis and then treatment 
these all headings i put well of course please don't ask me what content i wrote whatever i had in memory i wrote all those things with god's grace acharya's grace i ended up scoring 55 marks out of 100 just imagine had i retreated i would have to reappear for the same exam 6 months later so krishna gives the formula that sincere attempt is the most important thing i don't uh, come to say that we need not prepare for the exam at all we can write stories no not that way if at all life is full of strange situations we may encounter such situations but a leadership quality is we should make a sincere attempt whatever be the situation we should not retreat when a person retreats he will not be called a leader so we have got a duty in that case of mine i am a student appearing for exam my duty is to write the exam so i should have made a sincere attempt even today they say if a question even if a question is out of syllabus question that student has to just put the number and attempt writing something the examiner will give marks so a sincere attempt will always be appreciated in the case of a mathematics exam if the student has written formula perfectly and put the steps correctly he will get at least step marks even if the answer may be wrong he will get step mark so a sincere attempt is the most important thing needed for a leader that's what krishna says arjuna you may win this battle you may lose this battle you may get the kingdom you may die you may reach heaven you may enjoy this world that doesn't matter hato va prapsya se swargam jitva va bhokshya se bahi tasmat uttitta kaunteya yuddhaya krita nischaya yuddha this fight war is your duty be steady be sincere and work whatever comes that let me let it come so sincerity in duty makes a leader first thing and now coming to the second yes steadfastness in duty now it is very easy to say because uh, giving advice is the easiest thing in the world so we will say be sincere in your duty yes we can be sincere but while performing duty we encounter many pains many sufferings many losses we sacrifice many thing while doing our duty now how to combat all these things now the very next shloka lord krishna gives next tips adhyaya 2 shloka 38 second chapter 38th verse sukha dukhe samaye kritva labha labhau jaya jayau tato yuddhaya yujjasva naivam papam avapsyasi now krishna says arjuna yes i accept while doing your duty you will encounter sukha dukkha pleasure and pain labha labhau you will encounter either profit or loss jaya jayo victory or defeat so these twins will come alternatively you may face pleasure or pain profit or loss victory or defeat but what should you do is sukha dukkhe samaye kritva you treat both equally even if you get pleasure during your duty treat it okay with a sama nilai we say you have your mind should be in a steady state so with a steady mind you treat both pleasure and pain equally victory and defeat equally profit and loss equally just focus on your duty and proceed be steadfast and do your duty definitely you will have a better tomorrow though you may experience some defeat today if you pursue with your duty steadfastly you will get victory tomorrow even if you encounter a loss today if you are steadfast and do your duty you will get profit tomorrow even if you encounter pain today if you are steadfast and you do your duty you will get pleasure tomorrow i will just put an example to explain this further take the case of a software engineer or a software worker he will be assigned some project design he may encounter some pain during the designing of the project he might have to spend some sleepless nights he may have to sacrifice the valuable time he has to spend with his family to design the project so sacrificing family happiness or sacrificing his sleep whatever it is 
he may get some pain during the designing of his project but that doesn't matter if he considers that pain itself as pleasure just observe this, observe this thing if he considers that pain itself as pleasure and does his duty properly designs his project well ultimately he will get an incentive as a pleasure a student may have some difficulty while studying for exams but when he considers that difficulty itself as pleasure and focuses on his studies he will get good marks that's a great pleasure great victory great profit so a temporary pain will take you to a permanent gain without pain you can't gain so temporary pain will come accept that temporary pain be steadfast you will get a permanent gain because there is no substitute for hard work so be steadfast and work accept pains losses and defeats during the duty that will transform you towards whatever it is that is victory profit and then pleasure you will get all those things be steadfast that is the quality of a leader because if he is not a leader he will just retreat from the duty he will just start sincerely but i am having some pain during the execution of my duty let me come back no please be steadfast that is the quality of a leader now coming to the third thing setting an example now this person he is sincere he is steadfast that alone is not enough he should be an example for others to emulate him for this lord krishna quotes himself as an example in the third chapter 22nd verse lord krishna says name parthasti kartavyam trishu lokeshu kinchana nanavaptam avaptavyam vartha eva cha karmani krishna says o oh, arjuna for me the lord of all there is nothing whatever to achieve the lord krishna have anything to achieve but he says though i have nothing to be newly acquired by performing a work i go on working for the protection of the world krishna says vartha eva cha karmani the next shloka 23rd verse of ch third chapter yadihyaham na varteyam jatu karmani atandritah mam vartmanu vartante manushya partha sarvashah krishna says o oh arjuna if i don't perform the work suitable for me in this particular incarnation he has the lord has incarnated as the son of vasudeva and devaki regarding this particular incarnation i should do the work suitable for me if i don't execute my duties men with incomplete knowledge will follow my path thinking that this is the real way for all people now this is the psychology of all human being whatever a great man does all people will follow him blindly now we all know very well that lord krishna krishnam vande jagat guru lord krishna knows everything so what can we do whatever lord krishna does we can do krishna doesn't execute this duty properly so we also need not do not like that lord krishna i will tell you one important thing we know that krishna married 16008 women many people are accusing krishna did 16008 marriages but please note the thing in all those 16008 homes or palaces lord krishna created agnihotra vedi to perform agnihotra and taking 16008 forms lord krishna performed the vedic rite of agnihotra in each of the palace daily so see how far lord krishna is strict in his anushthanams in his religious rites lord krishna need not know agnihotra need not do then who is he doing means other people will say lord krishna himself is not doing religious rites so why should i do not only for religious rites whatever duty we have got we have to execute our duty properly to set an example lord krishna says yadi hyaham na varteyam jatu karmani atandritah mama vartmanu vartante manushya partha sarvashah i will 
I will be doing a great blunder by leading all people towards inaction. So I should not commit that error. So Lord Krishna does all actions so that people will emulate him and don't land up in inaction. So a good leader, he should perform his duty and be an example or a role model. So you need not be a role model in your own field alone. Whatever field you belong to, if we perform our duty in our field perfectly, we will be a role model to other people in all other fields. Take the example of my guru, Dr. Sri Uwe Karunagaracharya Swami. He had worked as an engineer in Central Government of India. He is a mechanical engineer. He worked there. Side by side, he delivered religious discourses as well. Taking him as an inspiration, I am doing my duty as a doctor at the same time performing spiritual discourses as well. So, when a person executes his duty properly in his field, he is not an inspiration for his field alone, but for other fields as well. At the same time, if a well-known person, renowned person doesn't do his duties properly, then he will mislead all the other people. I would like to say one story for this one anecdote. I went for a marriage function. Uh, there uh, in Kumbagonam, in Kumbagonam, mosquitoes are very, very notorious or famous, whatever it is. Those mosquitoes from the big focus slides fell into my eyes. So, while climbing those stairs, what I did was, I slightly skidded in the footsteps as mosquitoes fell into my eyes. So, I just caught hold of a pillar, which was, uh, that pillar was there at the beginning of those stairs. I just caught hold of that pillar and then set right my eyes and then climbed up those stairs. To my surprise, all the people who followed me were worshipping those pillars with folded hands and then climbing up the stairs. You got the reason? What they thought is, I, to set right my eyes, I just caught hold of that pillar and then cleaned my eyes and then climbed the stairs. People thought that this fellow is worshipping this pillar, so this must be a divine pillar. So everybody started worshipping that pillar with folded hands and then climbing the stairs. So, we have to be very careful in what we do. We should not set a bad example. That's why Lord Krishna says, set an example. You do your duty properly so that others should emulate you. This is the third yes. Now, coming to the fourth yes, sticking to our path. This is the most important thing. Three things we have seen. Fourth, stick to your path. Because some people think that others are well placed than us. Some people think that another person is happier than him. Some say, uh, some consider another person's job is easier than ours. These are all common human mindset. We say, he is well placed, but I am not so well placed. Some say, he is so happy, but see, I am encountering uh, sorrow after sorrow. We say, some consider another person's job is very easy. It is white collar job. But my job is very difficult. But what is the nature of your true leader? Lord Krishna says, 3rd chapter, 35th verse, Shreyam Swadharmo Vigunaha Paradharmat Swanuthithat Swadharme Nidhanam Shreyaha Paradharmo Bhayavaha What Lord Krishna says is, if you perform your duty, whatever it is assigned for you, if you perform your duty, even if there is some defect in it, there is no risk of all. Perform your duty. That is great. But if you try to perform another man's duty, even if you perform it well, it is liable to interruption. It is fraught with fear. So, whatever duty we have got, we have to execute our duty properly because East or West home is best, we say. So, thinking that, oh, that person, his path is very good. But for me, I my path is not so superior. So, shall I change my individuality and transform me like him so that I can be a good leader? No. Every person is a leader in himself. Every duty, because... 
God has created this universe with some equilibrium. So everybody in his place, in his situation has to execute his duty properly. In that context, everybody is a leader. Every duty is a leadership skill. Every performance is a leadership quality. So Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha in his commentary, Bhagavad Ramanuja goes to the extent saying that here Swadharma refers to Karma Yogam. Paradharma refers to Jnana Yogam that is leaving our Karma. Ramanuja says, if you perform your duty or Karma Yoga, even if there are defects in your Karma Yoga, in your mode of action, there is no risk of fall. But if a person tries to perform another man's duty, here it refers to reflection on self or Jnana Yoga. Even if that Jnana Yoga is well performed for some time, it is liable for interruption. Swadharme Nidhanam Shreyaha Even if a person dies without success in Karma Yoga, he can attain success in next birth. But in Jnana Yoga, there are possibility of errors. If we perform another man's duty, there are possibility of errors. So, it is difficult to practice. It is fraught with fear. So, a true leader will never complain about his duty. A true leader will never complain about his state. Whatever state, whatever duty, whatever situation he is, he will utilize that to the best extent so that he can prosper further. Because I have a friend, he used to stay, he used to say, the people who get 100 marks or 90 to 100 marks in exams, they become professionals like doctors, engineers. Those who get 80 to 90 marks, they become collectors and review all these doctors and engineers. So, 100 mark student is under the control of 80 to 90 mark student. Not only that, the people who get 60 to 70 marks, they become administrative officers and they dispense salary for this collector and all professionals. Now, the people who get 40 to 50 marks just to pass, they become policemen and lawyers and threaten all these people wholly. The people who get 20 marks, 25 marks, they become politicians and they control all the people above them. Now, what about the people who get zero marks? My friend said, they will become Swamiji's and they will control all of them. Now, his problem is, he is unable to secure marks. So, what he does is, everything is negative, everything is not perfect, he will say. Not like that. Even if you get zero marks, with that talent, you will have some other talent. In academics, you may be zero. You may have some vocational talent. You may have some talent in extracurricular or co-curricular activities. Unleash that. Shreyan Swadharmo Vikunaha. Whatever is your talent, you utilize that. And then take it forward. That is the fourth thing a leader should have. Sticking to our path. In any case, you should not transfer or just move from one thing to another. We should stick to our path. This is number four. Yes, number four. And then fifth yes is a simple thing. Sacrifice. While doing our duty, we should have three sacrifices. Three sacrifices. We should sacrifice three things while discharging our duty. What are they? In third chapter, Lord Krishna says, Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Adhyatma Chaitasa Nirashir Nirmamo Bhutva Yudhyasva Vigata Jvaraha. First thing is, Mai Sarvani Karmani. Sacrifice the ego that I am the doer. The big problem is, I did this. I did that. A good leader will not say so. So, God is doing it. God is using me as an instrument and doing. So, sacrifice the ego that I am the doer. Ramanuja defines this as, Kartritva buddhi tyagam. Sacrifice the thinking, ego that I am the doer. Second thing, nirmamo bhutva. Mamata tyagam. Sacrifice the attachment that this is my activity. Aha, this is mine. Sacrifice that thought and consider your duty itself as worship of God. I wish to worship God. This duty itself is an instrument for that. So, sacrifice the thought that 
This is my activity, mine. The third sacrifice is Palatyagam. Sacrifice the fruit. Offer the fruit of your activity to Lord. Or consider that the result is a blessing of Lord rather than thinking that I did this for that I got this result. Rather than thinking like that, just offer it to Lord and consider it as the blessing of Lord. So, sacrifice the sense of I. Sacrifice the attachment. This is my activity. Sacrifice the worldly fruit emerging from that activity. If we perform our duty with these three sacrifices, then he is a good leader. Because a good leader will never proclaim, I did this. I alone can do this. He won't say. He will have the confidence, I can do this. But he will never say, I alone did this. I alone can do this. He won't say. Similarly, he should not develop attachment to that. Similarly, he should not focus on results only. If we focus on our work, result will come automatically. So that is the most important thing. Even in World Cup, our captain Rohit Sharma says, we will focus on one game at a time. We will play our natural game. Victory will come on its own. So that is more important. These three sacrifices make a leader. This is the fifth yes. Now coming to the final part, the sixth yes. The sixth yes is skill in the application of our duty. Execution. Coming to the skill, every action has two parts. In Bhagavad Gita, fourth chapter, Lord Krishna says this, Shreyan Dravyamayat Yajnyat Jnana Yajnyaf Parantapha. In fourth chapter, this shloka comes. Every, uh, Ramanuja defines this, every action has got two parts. Action part and knowledge part. Action part is whatever you are doing externally that constitutes action part. Knowledge part is your internal thinking. In what mindset you are doing? The thing is, Krishna stresses that the internal knowledge part is more important than the execution part. Of course, your execution should be good. The action part should be good. But the knowledge part, with what mindset you are doing, that is very, 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 very important. For this, I will say a simple anecdote and complete this thing. The simple anecdote is, in Kanchipuram, there was a great scholar, Prativadi Bayankaram Anangaracharya Swami, great Vishishtadvaita scholar. He was a friend of Kanchi Mahaswami, Kanchi Periyava, Sri Chandrasegarendra Saraswati Swami. These two giants were conversing with each other. At that time, for Kanchi Mahaswami, there was an attendant. He was just waving a fan for Kanchi Mahaswami. Kanchi Mahaswami asked, Pradivadi Bhayankaram, Anagarachar Swami, you tell me which part is important in action, action part or knowledge part. Anagarachar Swami said, knowledge part is more important. Kanchi Mahaswami had asked, how do you say so? Now, Anagarachar Swami quoted an example. Oh, Mahaswami, you have an attendant by your side. He is waving fan for you. While he is waving fan for you, more than the action part, his knowledge is very important. Because if that guy thinks that, oh, I am blessed to wave fan for this great sage. I am blessed. If he has this kind of a thinking and he waves fan, then it is good service. But if that same fellow thinks, what oh, this elderly person is sitting here, he has summoned me to wave his fan. How long should I wave for him? How long should I do this? If he performs this waving of fan with this kind of a mindset, what is the use of serving a sage? So, while you are performing your duty, this knowledge part, internal part is more important than the external part. That's why Lord Krishna says, Brahmarpanam, Brahmahavihi, Brahmagnau, Brahmanahutam, Brahmaivatena Gantavyam, Brahmakarma Samadhina. You should see the instruments of your work as the body of God. That is, God dwells within that, having it as his sharira or body. You should see your investment in your job as a part of God. You should see your clients as the body of God. You should see the doer himself as the body of God. So, God lives within your instruments. He lives within your office. He lives within your investments. He lives within your clients. He lives within the perform hour of duty also. 
take the example of your doctor in his stethoscope inside the stethoscope god is there in his clinic god is there within the patient god is there within the doctor god is there so the doctor should develop a mindset that god is there within my stethoscope god is there within my pen with which i write my prescription god is there within my patient for whom i am treating god is there within me also blesses me from within so if a person develops this kind of a mindset just imagine the quality of execution of each and every job or each and every profession if will we commit any error or any cheating or other things no because we treat the patient with the thinking that the god within the patient should get satisfied automatically fees will come that is another thing but we need not treat for fees may god be pleased with my action so fees will come automatically this karma yoga this mindset elevates all the professions to the next level that takes the society to the next level that is the role of a leader so what a leader should do is he should just transform the society to the next level that leadership comes when we develop this mindset while executing our duty that is the skill part so skill doesn't lie in mere execution that lies in the knowledge part with what mindset we execute our duty so we have got six yes now first yes is we have to be sincere in our duty whatever it is we should not retreat we should be sincere in our duty second yes is we should be steadfast we should accept pain loss and defeat so that we can ultimately get pleasure victory and profit third thing we should set an example fourth thing we should stick to our path and don't waver towards others fifth thing we should be able to perform those three sacrifices i mind and fruit while doing the duty sixth thing is in skill the mental out mental whatever we think within us that mental thinking is more important so knowledge part is more important than the action part the six yes will produce good leader within everybody so it is not like one person is leading others are led every person is a leader in himself that is the path shown by lord krishna who is the leader of all leaders because god is different jeevatmas can be a leader by themselves but paramatma is the leader for all jeevatmas the leader of all leaders has taught this way so that everybody can become a leader i thank you all for the opportunity now you can interact thank you thank you very much dr venkatesh very highly spirited uh, talk on uh, the six ways in which we can exhibit our leadership qualities and i love the way you connected it to the shlokas and how from the shlokas with examples and then finally how can we apply it through anecdotes anecdotes each one now i think we will remember that way instead of next time telling somebody like be sincere i think we will tell them the shloka now and tell them that that is how you have to be so thank you very much the few questions that have come which i know because of time we have 6 minutes uh okay. one of them is about uh, now we know what it takes for me to be a leader and all these things now how can i make an individual or a colleague of course our uh, we can um, uh, you know through our example we can be this but how can i tell somebody a colleague that this is your duty what kind of skill should i have in order to convince somebody else that that is their duty regarding this the only way i feel is with my experience and what all i learned from my acharyas the only way to make other person follow is we should follow because in today's world people are least receptive to advice because we should follow and we should be able to achieve if that person sees how far we are able to achieve by doing our duty then automatically that person will be prompted to do something and achieve this in his field or our field that is different leading by example is the only way and the same example for youngsters of today's generation where they do not even have an opportunity to think that they have to learn from somebody else how would you uh, give that advice 
Yes, this is a very valid question because in today's case, youngsters say we need not learn from anybody else. We we by ourselves we have got sixth sense we can know. For them, Lord Krishna he leads by example. Lord Krishna went to Gurukulam of Sandipani in Ujjain, and Lord Krishna learnt sixty four arts in sixty four days. Just think, the Lord knows everything. Why should the Lord go to a guru? He need not seek any guru. He is the Lord of all. Krishna Mande Jagat Guru. Why should he go to a guru? Not only that, in Bhagavata Purana, 10th Skandam, 80th chapter, Lord Krishna says to Kuchela, uh, while meeting Kuchela, Lord Krishna says, Do you remember that we did a lot of service to our guru? We used to go to forest and cut wooden logs to bring uh, to our Guru for his Agnikaryams and other things. So Krishna did all these services to his Guru and learned the art. Reason is, without Guru, one cannot learn. Because our Gurus, they have treaded on the great path and they have shown. Only we, if we follow their footsteps, we can go. Just take the case, we are all blind in case of spirituality. Because we are unable to have divine spiritual vision. So, if a person, blind person is standing by a road, only a person with a vision can lead him to the other side of the road. Similarly, the vision of our great seers, that alone can take us to the next level in life. So, Lord Krishna led by an example this thing. So, what can we do is, we can all teach our children the stories of Lord Krishna, what all he did. So, even if God has to seek a guru, Definitely every human being has to seek a guru. So guru alone leads us. Just like a blind man is led by a man with good vision to the other side of the road. A good guru, he alone can take us beyond the shore of samsaram or worldly existence. So another question sim similar to because this okay. is about uh, taking the examples from our own life. Since you are a medical doctor, how can Bhagavad Gita help us to attain better health? I think this question has been asked of you many times. So I Yes, I would say that Shlokam from the sixth chapter, Yuktahara Viharasya, Yukta Chetasya Karmasu, Yukta Swapnava Bodhasya, Yogo Bhavati Dukkaha. The speciality of this verse is in Chennai, there was a medical conference. A doctor from US presented a paper on diabetes in that uh, conference. And she said, India is the headquarters of diabetes in today's world. But do you know that in your own Bhagavad Gita, you, you Indians have got a beautiful shloka. Yukta Ahara, balanced diet. Yukta Viharasya, balanced physical activity. Yukta Chaitasya Karmasu, balanced exertion for your job. Yukta Swapna, balanced sleep. Yukta Avabodhasya, balanced wakefulness. So, balanced diet, balanced physical activity, balanced exertion for your job, balanced sleep, balanced wakefulness, this will take you to better health. This tip is given by Lord Krishna. Now, for diabetes, we are. I am also a diabetologist. We are all advising, don't feast, don't fast. Neither feast nor fast. Take moderate diet. Please don't lead a sedentary life. Have minimal physical activity, moderate physical activity. And we say, don't get overstressed in your duty, moderate exertion. And then we say, have 8 hours, 7 to 8 hours sleep and have good wakefulness. Now, Yukta Swapna Avabodhasya, sleep, wakefulness, they have been mentioned separately because some people, even while they are waking, they will be asleep. So, Krishna separates them and says, Yukta Swapna Avabodhasya, if we strike a balance in all these things, that will take you to good health. Thank you. Uh, one last question. Uh, okay. How do you simply, if you are following Swadharma or Paradharma in this world of many duties and roles that we all play, what? How, how do we know that I am following my Swadharma or Paradharma? Okay, okay. Uh, in, in Gita's context, uh, now I will answer the question in two parts. In Gita's context, as per the commentaries of great Acharyas, their Swadharma refers to Karma Yoga and Paradharma refers to Jnana Yoga. That context is different. Now coming to our case, 
second part what is our swadharma what is paradharma swadharma is the duty which is assigned to us now for we will have our family tradition our religious tradition so regarding our religious rights and duties whatever our ancestors have followed andal nachiyar in tamil says melayar seivanagal venduvana ketiye so whatever our ancestors have followed whatever our acharyas and great seers have followed that constitutes our swadharma but one thing it might not be followed by our acharyas it may be even condemned by our acharyas it it may not be followed in our tradition or family if we tread towards that path that constitutes paradharma now coming to our own job how can we distinguish between swadharma and paradharma in a material life in an office means if a person works sincerely in his office considering his job itself as worship of lord please note that ramanuja in his commentary doesn't say that mere sandhya vandanam or pranayamam or daily worship this alone constitute karma yoga ramanuja doesn't say so he says even if a person is uh, is uh, in a material sort of job if he considers that job as worship of god does it with sincerity and offers the result to god even that material sort of work is karma yoga laukikani ramanuja's commentary says laukikani sharira dharanarthani vaidikani nitya naimittikani cha karmani so their swadharma is if a person works in his office sincerely considering it itself as a worship of god or if he is an engineer he does his duty properly a civil engineer constructs a and uh, constructs a building considering that it is an offering to god that is swadharma but while working if he falls asleep or watches his mobile phone or watches world cup in he, disney or hotstar or just uh, cut uh, cuts his work and goes for some other place if he does all the if he does all these things that will become paradharma so sticking to our job is swadharma and refraining from our job is paradharma in laukika context in religious context following the path of our acharyas traditions family elders is swadharma now changing from that part is paradharma in gita's context karma yogam is swadharma jnana yogam is paradharma great thank you very much thank for you. a really wonderful wonderful talk today thank you and thank just, you for the wonderful topic no <laughs> thank you